Hi, I'm Randy Reed, editor of the Epson Report, and we are here at NY Control for the second edition in New York City. And I am joined by Ray Dadley, the CEO of JDRF. Ray, welcome. Pleasure to meet you. Now, I met your company last year right, uh, right. here at this show, and I was very impressed uh, by your company, and I learned a lot. But what makes Autonomy Lighting by JDRF so unique? Well, fundamentally, it is the only technology in the world that self-commissions a full-featured right. luminaire-level lighting control system with no human involvement before, during, or after the deployment. Simply put, the electrical contractor powers up the system and walks away. And what makes this technology particularly interesting is that it is the only adaptive technology where the system will automatically detect and respond to changes in the built environment. So that on day two after the installation, the facility team is not burdened with the maintenance and redemising of the space. Okay, so to that point, I kind of wrote about that last year. Yes. And I had one guy to give me pushback. All right. And he said self-commissioning, no such thing. Right, right. So you must get that a lot. We get that every single time we present, and folks do not believe it until they see it, but we run them through a demonstration where we take a factory uh, uh, initial system, we let it run for 30 minutes, and within 30 minutes, every single motion group, daylight group, and wall-mounted control group has self-configured before their very eyes. Many people have dreamed about self-commissioning. Yes. How are you, I respectfully say a relatively unknown company. Yes. How did you pull it off? Well, it was about five years of research and development. And essentially what we've developed is a series of breakthroughs that allows each and every one of our devices to discover their built environment. And they do that in a couple of interesting ways. One way is through the use of near-infrared light, where they emit infrared light and neighboring devices receive the infrared light and through machine learning can figure out the relative distance between the receiving device and the emitting device. Now this process happens continuously and through every single device in a cascading manner. By the end of that process, devices have essentially built a map of the floor plan. They know which lights are in the same room and they know which lights are on the opposite side of let's say an opaque wall or even a glass wall. Now that's the first pillar. Once devices figure out their general spatial layout, they begin to analyze the data that's generated in the building. And the data that our system is looking at is the distribution of daylight levels throughout the space and the flow of motion throughout the space. And when you combine the knowledge of the daylight levels in the space, the motion patterns for the space, and which lights are in the same space, you can readily see how the system can begin to configure all of the daylight, motion, and wall-mounted control groups. I, thank you for that. It makes a lot of sense. I hadn't really understood until now. But that does make a lot of sense. How do you see this impacting the uh, lighting and controls industry? The impact is absolutely transformational. Fundamentally, we are lowering cost to the end user to acquire luminaire level lighting control. I think everybody who's worked with smart lighting knows that there is a commissioning line item. And right. commissioning is typically uh, the most complicated and really the biggest barrier to entry for smart lighting. It is a process that requires planning, it is a process that requires on-site programming, and of course, at the end of the day, the customer is left with a static system that does not respond to change. They, they can't simply add, remove, replace, or relocate devices at will without repeating the commissioning or the setup process. So by removing that commissioning process altogether, we've drastically lowered costs to the end user and we've now made smart lighting affordable to any project of any size or any application type. And I'd go so far as to say that this is really one of the rare examples, not just in the lighting industry, but across uh, technology as a whole, where a new technology delivers superior performance at a roughly comparable or lower price than the incumbent. Wow, that's big. Can you share any uh, real life examples, any installations that you have now? Yeah, so one of the big uh, case studies that's been getting a lot of attention is with the largest retailer in Canada. And the challenge that they put in front of us is 
in their grocery stores, they want the lights above each grocery aisle to form an independent motion group so that when a shopper walks into the aisle, lights go from about 40% to about 80%. And they want the lights to operate in unison. Now they do not want motion to be enabled around the perimeter of the store. And so the challenge they put to us was, can your system learn which lights are in the aisle and when they figure out which lights are in the aisle to synchronize their operation with the other lights that are in the same aisle. Now the constraints they gave us is, there are no floor plans provided, no internet connection provided. They're not gonna tell us how many lights are in the store or how many are in an aisle. We can't simply send a box of red sensors for the aisle and a box of blue sensors for the perimeter. We send them the same sensor and we just ship them in bulk to the fixture company where they're installed at the uh, Luminaire factory. Contractors install them and within hours of shoppers entering the store, our system has learned from the motion patterns which lights are in the aisle and which lights are in the same aisle and which ones are in the perimeter. And then you code it and you tell the ones that are in the aisle to do X and the ones around the perimeter to do Y. Yeah, so they already have their profile. All they have to do is learn whether they've been installed in an aisle or not. Okay. I may have to go see that. You, you're I welcome anytime. See welcome that. anytime. Where, where's yeah. it? Toronto? Yeah, so this is coast to coast across Canada. Okay. Uh, we've deployed it in about uh, 125 stores. Okay. And the velocity and the scale that we're able to deploy at is completely unmatched in this industry. Okay. Wow, congratulations. All right. Thank you very much. Great, a pleasure.